Today I'm going to be taking a look at the new Seiko 5 Sports range. Uh, this kind of model line is now known as the Seiko 5KX, kind of colloquially. Uh, kind of the spiritual predecessor to the SKX. Mm, let's get into it and see how it is. We have a diameter of about 42.5 millimeters, lug to lug of just under 46, height of 13.3, and a lug width of 22 millimeters. Some other general specifications for the watch, we're gonna have the Seiko 4R36 movement beating in here. It's gonna have a beat rate of, I believe, 21,600 vibrations, 41 hour power reserve, hacking and hand winding, all that good stuff. We're gonna have 100 meters of stated water resistance without a screw down crown, it's just a regular push pull. All the loom on the dial is applied with Seiko's Lumabrite. And we also have in the back here a display case back where both this back crystal and this front crystal are hard legs. So moving into the dial of this watch, and I think this is kind of the point where I was most pleasantly surprised. I only kind of got this watch to review, and very honestly, I do not like the original SKX. And spoiler alert, I do like this watch. So it's kind of an interesting dynamic there. The green dial, I think, is a very, very nice shade of green. It is very, very dark, except at certain angles where you get that kind of like nicer, uh, lighter green to show through especially in the bezel as well, because I mean, it is aluminum, so it has kind of like darker states and lighter states. The fact that the hands and the surrounding of the markers are all done in this kind of rose gold plating looks very, very clean. It pairs really, really well with the green. It's not as kind of bright and in your face as if it was a true gold tone rather than rose gold. So I think it's a really, really nice addition here. Looking more generally, we have the classic kind of just SKX layout, the traditional just Seiko dive watch style look to it. We have the day date window, we have very minimal text with Seiko at the top, the new Seiko 5 logo and automatic at the bottom here. All done in a similar rose tone to the rest of the dial, which I think is a really, really nice addition. We could also see here we have a raised and slanted chapter ring there, which is also done in a green tone. A little harder to tell right now, but it is still done in that kind of darkish green tone. Overall, the dial is done well, it's done simply, it's done cleanly, and I think the color temperatures they went for uh, with both the actual face and the surrounding rose gold elements look really nice together. Looking a lot more closely at the dial here, we see we have this very fine texture to the dial itself, this kind of like dimpling slash almost mossy look to the dial, which I think is a really, really nice touch. The Seiko applied logo and the Seiko 5 logo there, which I misstated earlier as applied, is actually printed. Both look really, really nice. There aren't any imperfections there. We can see on the hands, there are a little bit more of a, a blemish, a little bit more imperfection in the hands here. It's not bad by any means. And honestly, for the price point of this is 300 new and kind of 200 easily found on eBay also new, it's not bad at all. And I think the tone and just kind of overall completeness of how the loom is applied, the kind of harsh geometry of all the shapes here, works really well. Again, before I move on, there is some kind of scratching on that hand there, which you can see very, very plainly. A little bit of dust slash dirtiness by that hand stack. And you know, it, it is a more affordable watch where you can't expect mirror-like perfection. Looking at the applied indices themselves, you see they are still scratched. They're not gonna be perfectly clean. But something I will point out is the loom is done very, very nicely. It is all very finely packed. There isn't any large gaps or any apparent kind of super large texture to it. It is done really nicely, really cleanly, and it's filled pretty well, so it's gonna glow really well. The text is all done really nicely. You can see kind of the gradient that we're getting from the dial in the very much darker green regions to the lighter, more foresty green. It is a beautiful tone they went with again, and I don't really have a lot to complain about with this dial here. It is well done. There aren't too many imperfections that I wouldn't expect for this price range. And overall, I think you'll be happy with what you get. Moving on to the case of this watch, and it is gonna be the classic traditional SKX case. I'm 95% sure that pretty much all the aftermarket SKX accoutrements fit this, <laughs> fit this watch. You know, the strap code bracelets and whatnot will fit on this watch, which is nice. I don't think this is a bad bracelet by any means in a sense. I mean, it obviously is not the most highest quality, but it is definitely serviceable. For this dial, the only thing I will say is I wish they went with rose gold in the markers out here in the bezel. It isn't a deal breaker by any means, and the white does match the whitish tone of the loom, but it would have been a nice attention to detail I would have liked to see overall. 
Looking at the case more generally, we see we have brushed all along the lug tops in a kind of circular grained fashion. We have this high polish along the crown here, which kind of is the pseudo chamfer. We have high polish along the sides, drilled lugs, which is always great to see, makes strap changing really easy. We have this kind of raised square bezel here. It isn't the best for grip, it's fairly slippy. Uh, you can not always get a good purchase on it, especially if you put a little bit more force, but there's definitely a lot of be better bezels out there. This is a 120 click unidirectional bezel. It has a slight amount of play in it, really nothing major. Uh, it kind of lines up, maybe it doesn't line up, who knows, it is a Seiko. Overall decent bezel, it's not gonna be life changing by any means, but it gets the job done. A kind of uh, down the barrel shot of the watch will kind of show you why, uh, one of the reasons at least why the case wears so well. We can see there is a very dramatic kind of slope and bell shape to the mid case here. The fact that it's like so curved and beveled along this kind of bottom edge here will lead to not only it wearing well on the bottom wrist, but also if there is any flexion happening, it will not dig. It'll feel kind of just nice and smooth against the wrist. Taking a quick look at the case back here, we do see we have the Seiko uh, again for our 36 movement in there. Not really decorated at all, but it is always nice to kind of see these workhorse undecorated Seiko movements that has some kind of like nice brushing on it. It isn't too shabby to look at in all honesty, but there are definitely prettier things out there. Moving on to the bracelet, we see we have a three link style oyster. We have a female end link, which makes it drape really nicely around the wrist. Overall, pretty comfortable. I believe these are hollow links. Who knows? I'm just assuming they are. We just have a pin and collar system for the bracelet here. Four holes of micro adjust, which is nice to see. Uh, regular stamped clasp, which is pretty secure. Nice fold over. It all feels very sturdy, very secure. Uh, no really problems with this action or the feeling of it. I mean, it is pressed, but honestly, it doesn't feel that bad to me at all. And right here, just before we move on, we have hollow end links. It isn't the <laughs> best thing to see. I, I would prefer solid, but honestly, for this price point, I can't complain. And they are incredibly sturdy feeling for being hollow. Overall sturdy bracelet. I think it pairs really nicely with the watch, gives it a kind of just tooly vibe. And I mean, this is a tool watch. So I like it and let's move on to how it wears. Earlier I was wearing my Seiko tank and I forget the reference number of this. I'll put it somewhere over here, but this is a pretty cool watch I'll be reviewing soon. So stay tuned for that if you are interested. So here we have the watch on my 6.5 inch wrist. And I think you can tell it sits very well within the bounds of my wrist. It does not overhang by any means. You can definitely wear this on a smaller wrist than mine. It, I mean, it really just depends on how long your wrist is on top, not necessarily how wide around it is. Wears well, it wears comfortably on wrist because of this four o'clock crown designation here. It is very comfortable, it doesn't dig in at all because of the kind of chamfering along the underside and kind of the roundedness of the mid case. It does not dig into the wrist in any way. It is very comfortable on wrist. Even if you wear your watches slightly tighter, it is gonna feel pretty much great. Looking at it from the side there, again, we do have the case back just kind of sitting flush inside of the wrist and the mid case conforming really well to the top. Overall, I really don't have any complaints with how this wears. I think if you are kind of dismissing this because of it's a 42, I wouldn't necessarily go down that route. If you've never worn an SKX, try it on. It is an interesting case in how it wears just basically because of how short the lug to lug is. The only one minor gripe I will mention about the wearing experience of this is the bracelet clasp is a little bit clicky. You can hear it when there's a little bit of wrist flexion. So I'm pretty sure it caught that. A little bit annoying, kind of shows that it is a lower end Seiko, but for what you're getting, especially with a decently looking and feeling bracelet at this price point, I don't really have any complaints. So unfortunately, I don't own really any other 22 millimeter watch other than when I first bought this one. So I bought a couple straps, but I don't have as many as I normally would. So forgive me if the combinations aren't amazing. I think this Barton canvas does pair really well though, the kind of Khaki tones play really well off the rose gold. You can also probably go with the Barton Elite silicone that would also look pretty nice. There we have the strap on wrist. Just kind of a nice everyday combo, especially if it for some reason is a little bit too heavy on the bracelet or whatnot. Uh, I dig it. And as always, my white Archer silicone strap here that I get off of Amazon. If you haven't tried one of these before, just give it a shot. It's very affordable off of Amazon, two day shipping, and pretty much every watch I ever tried on, it looks great in my opinion. There we have it on wrist. I think the white tones play really well with the watch. It goes with the green well. It goes with the kind of white signature of the loom really nicely. 
I would probably end up cutting off this tang. I haven't worn this strap too much yet. And there we have it with kind of how it would look without the tang, a little MacGyvered there. But I think it looks pretty clean, wears really comfortably because of course it's silicone. So yeah, get yourself one. And last but not least, we have this rubber silicone from Benchmark Straps. I really, really like these silicones because they're very comfortable, they're very thin, and it just is kind of like a low-key understated look for the watch. And there we have it on my wrist. Uh, and especially if you have problems with kind of how the watch wears, uh, this silicone will definitely kind of plant it to the wrist a little bit better. And yeah, I just like the look. Moving on to the loom, as you can see, this is a Seiko. There is gonna be a lot of loom on here. Uh, nothing you wouldn't expect. It shines brightly, it looks nice. One thing I will note is it kind of creates this nice lens distortion around the edge of the crystal, making the, it look like there is kind of extra dots when there aren't. I like that, it looks cool. And yeah, that is the loom. Relooming and comparing to the Timex, as you can see, the color temperatures are pretty similar. I would say the actual Seiko looks a little brighter, which is always nice. It is more green because of just kind of the loom pigment, but Seiko did good on loom. That's kind of what we expected, and yeah, there you go. Pros and cons of this 5KX here, and one of the main ones for me is really gonna be the fit of the watch. It is a 42 millimeter watch, which is on the larger side, uh, not too abnormal for a dive watch, but I would have loved to see a 40 millimeter case. Even still, it fits really well. It has a short lug to lug distance. It is very sculpted on the case bottom, so it just wears ergonomically on wrist. So if the size was kind of something that held you up, don't let it, the cases wear amazingly well. Another really cool thing about this 5KX series in specific is that it has a lot of variety in it. There are a lot of color combinations. There are a lot of dial textures. You have that one, which is kind of like the avocado texture to it. You have the Street Fighter series. I believe they came out with a Naruto series recently. So you have all these cool kind of just variations and it's like you don't have to go out there and mod your own SKX necessarily. You get these kind of cool, unique color combinations uh, kind of pre-made. And if that's not for you, you have the more, you know, standard uh, offerings that like the black dial or kind of the more of the Pepsi look and all that kind of stuff. So it is a pretty cool feature for the watch. And my last con is really, I think the quality is there. I mean, sure, it's missing some of the things that you would almost expect because micro brands have kind of geared us towards wanting sapphire and screw down crowns and all this good stuff. But, you know, the dial printing is pretty good. Yes, there's a little bit of roughness around the uh, kind of hands and markers and all that, but you don't see it from wrist. And, you know, the dial printing, the dial coloration, the tone of the dial, everything works well together. It looks like a quality watch and you know, you are paying a decent amount of money for this watch and I don't think it's misplaced at all. Moving on to cons, and there are a couple and probably <laughs> more than usual. Uh, one of the biggest ones I think is there's no screw down crown. The original SKX had a screw down crown. This one doesn't, this one has less water resistance. It's all kind of a bummer. I mean, Seiko is a very big company. It probably wouldn't cost them much to do a screw down crown version. Uh, but I mean, obviously it probably didn't wasn't worth it in cost sense, you know, they could probably sell just as many without screw down crowns, so they did. Other than that, I think the bezel could be a little bit better. It is kind of a little slick, unless you're just pressing really like hard into it. It doesn't have a great kind of audible click to it. It's a little bit mushy. There's not a lot of back play, which is nice, but again, it's just not the best bezel in the world. Another con I would say is probably the retail price. I believe they're about 295 give or take which model and style you're going for and at that price you're kind of going against watches like the Islander from Long Island Watches or uh, Signum which they have an SKX style uh, line as well and these are watches or I mean all these kind of watches in the micro brand community usually have kind of more ergonomic cases in some senses they have screw down crowns when we want them they have sapphire they have display case backs, screw down crowns. Uh, they have all those things that us watch nerds want. And this 5KX is lacking in some of those areas. So it's kind of like if you go with this one, you're going with it for more the look of it in a sense, because the quality is there, it is a nice watch. It's just that it isn't as good as it could be compared to some of its competitors on the market. And last but not least, uh, in the original SKX line, we saw that there was a 38 millimeter version for those of us with smaller wrists. But with this new 5KX line, we see they only have that 42 millimeter uh, variation. I don't know if the maybe 013 wasn't a great seller 
or just maybe they figured they can just sell more of the 42 millimeter ones, whatever the case is, it would have been nicer to see that 38 millimeter size. I mean, although again, this case does wear well, there are still those of us with smaller wrists that would like a smaller watch. So, I mean, you can always go with, again, the brands like Signum or Islander who do very similar styles of the SKX case with all those upgrades you would want and in a 38 millimeter size as well. So final thoughts on this watch, and I think it is a good watch. It's just not the best watch for the price point. There are other brands you can go with that kind of offer more for the almost the same price. And what I say to that is either go for one used, go for one uh, on eBay from like a great market dealer. You're never really gonna have to use the warranty on an SKX anyway, and if for some reason the movement's a dud or something like that, it's fairly easy to replace. Like I said, there are other brands that have better upgrades, but you can always go kind of aftermarket to those secondary sellers or those brands like Dagaz, I think, that have the sapphire crystals and they have the sapphire bezel inserts and all these good stuffs to upgrade your watch. So that's another option. And this is basically the same platform as the SKX was. So there's no reason you couldn't mod it yourself. Um, but then again, that kind of ups the price a little bit. It's really just depending on what you want. If there is kind of like a color combination in this 5KX range that you just love, like for me, it's this green dial with rose gold markers. I just think it looks really, really classy. Then just go for it. It is a good watch in general, especially at used and secondary market prices, but it's all just up to you. In the end, I don't think you're gonna be mad if you buy one of these watches. I think you'll still enjoy it. And yeah, I hope you got something out of the video. Thank you for watching and see you in another one.